Okay, good morning, fourth grade. We're, uh, uh, this is our fourth video in this series, uh, this first week of quarantine. And so uh, we're going to take a look here at lesson uh, 113 and 114. So 113 starts on page 281. And this lesson is taking a look again at two digit times two digit multiplication. Or you'll see that it's entitled two digit times two digit factors. So remember that numbers that you multiply together are called factors. Okay? So we're kind of building a little bit over what we did yesterday, but we're going to look at it in a little bit different form. So when you're looking up at the top of page 281, what they show you here is the number 19 times the number 15. Okay, so two-digit number times a two-digit number. All right, so yesterday we were looking at it in what we call horizontal form, okay? And if you remember, yesterday we were taking, uh, like, we would take 19, whoops, 19 times, and then we would break this into 10, plus 5. So then you would have 19 times 10 plus 19 times 5. And 19 times 10 would be 19 times 1, which is 19 with a 0 after it. Okay. And then 19 times 5, you know, if you needed to, in your head, you could take, break this into 10 plus 9 times 5, and that would be 5 times 10 plus 5 times 9. All right? But we also can do that this way by taking 5 times 9 which is 45, put down the 4, we got the carrot 1, or 4 carried up in our heads, and 5 times 1, 5 plus 4 is 9. So then you'd have 190 plus 95. So what, notice this is a multiplication here. Remember that the answer to a multiplication problem is called the product. Okay? And this is part of the product, okay? This is the product of this part, and this is the product of this part. And so we call those, you'll have those referred to in the book as partial products. And then we were adding these two partial products together, and we get 285, all right? That's how we were doing it yesterday. Now watch how we're doing it today. It looks very similar, okay? So we would take, first of all, we would think 19 times five, okay? 19 times five, okay? And we, so if we did that, We'd have 5 times 9, 45, put down the 5, carry the 4, and 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 9. So notice, there's that partial product that we got doing it this way. Okay? <laughs> so then, we 
we go to this one, but remember, okay, like we were doing here, where we took one times 19, but then we had a zero after it. So we're taking still 19 times 10, which is 19 times one with a zero after it, okay? And so that's the other partial product. Now what that would look like over here is we would take 1 times 9, or 1 times 19, 1 times 9. Now, remember, we are going to add a 0 at the end of this, because this is not 1. This is 10. 1 with a 0 after it. So what we do is we put a 0 in the 1's place to hold that place, because we're at, remember, that's that 1 that we're adding in later. We're just putting that zero there first. And then one times 19, there's our second partial product. And then instead of adding it this way, we add it this way. We add it vertically. So we have five plus zero, five. Nine plus nine, 18. Put down the eight, carry the one. 1 plus 1, 2. Notice we get the same answer. All right? So this, doing it this way, is just the way we were doing it yesterday, only in, instead of horizontal form, we're doing it in vertical form. All right? So let's take a look at another one. All right? Let's look at number, that was number one. Let's look at number three. So follow along here. Here's number three. This was number one. Oops. This is number three on page 281. And we got 63 times 24. Okay, this time I'm not gonna do this. I'm just going to do it this way. So if we were breaking out 24 into 20 plus 4, then we'd be taking 4 times 63 and 20 times 63. Okay? So here's our first partial product, which is just going to be 63 times 4. So watch. Do our ones first. Four times three is 12. Put down the two. Carry the one. Four times six, 24 plus one makes 25. So my first partial product is 252. So then I go and I take this 2, but that remember, that's a 2 in tens place, so that's 20. So just like we were doing yesterday, we're just going to take 2 times 63 and then add a 0 to it, because 20, we, we have that 0 and then the 2. So I know I'm going to put a 0 after it, so... I put that zero in one's place first. Hold on to that place. If I don't, when I start multiplying, I might write my number here. And then I'd be adding ones and tens together. That doesn't work that well. Okay? So we're going to take two. Two times three is six. So notice with that zero there, I'm putting my six in tens place is where it should start anyway, okay? And then I'm taking two times six, which is 12. So I put down the two and carry the one, which goes over here. There's my second partial product. And then I add two plus zero is 
2, 5 plus 6, 11, put down the 1, carry the 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 2 is 5, and then nothing plus 1, 1. So my answer would be 1,512. Okay? Again, if I was doing it ver uh, horizontally, it would be, uh, let's do it this way, 24 times 63. So I break 24 into 20 plus 4 times 63. Okay? So 20, so 63 times 20 is going to be 63 times 2 with a 0 after it. Okay? So if I take 2 times 63, 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times 6 is 12, okay, that'd be 126, and then a 0 after it. Notice that's what we got when we did it vertically. Plus, 4 times 63, so 4 times 3 is 12, put down the 2, carry the 1, 4 times 6 is 24, plus 1 is 25, Notice that was my other partial product. And when I add it up, I'm still going to get 1,512. So that's the way we were doing it yesterday. This is just doing it vertically instead of horizontally. And notice there's not as many steps. I don't have to actually break this apart. Okay? I'm just kind of doing it all in one thing, like that. Okay? And that's all, really, page 281 and 282 is. All right? It's showing you, like with the grid again, and don't, using two different colors. But the rest of the time, it's doing it just in vertical form. Now, you'll notice in the book that it has little squares. And that is, if you have paper that's like that, that's called graph paper. All right? You don't have to use graph paper, but sometimes people find that using graph paper helps them to keep their columns straight so that they're adding ones with ones, tens with tens. All right? You don't have to have graph paper to do it. And you might start off with it not using graph paper. Only go to graph paper if you find that you're having tr you're getting messy and having trouble keeping the columns straight. All right? Graph paper sometimes is a little more expensive than regular notebook paper, but it's still not too bad. So if it's going to help you in this chapter doing multiplication to keep your columns straight, okay, then, you know, go ahead and ask, you know, you can't ask mom or, or Santa, you could ask the Easter Bunny, I guess, um, but you still have to be good, you know, uh, and uh, you could get some graph paper in your Easter basket, just get it a little early, okay, say, I've been good enough with all my school stuff that uh, I really think that I've earned a uh, package of uh, graph paper. Actually, you better just say, Mom, Dad, could I have some graph paper instead of basing it on whether you've been good or not, all right? Okay, so hope that helps you out, all right? So if you look over at page 283 and 284, that's lesson 114, all right? Notice it says 
multiply, and estimate. So the multiplication is still going to be the same as what we just did. All right? No different. It's going vertically. That's up and down. Okay? And so notice the example they have up at the up on top. They have 42 times 38. <laughs> Now, they're trying to help you out a little bit by showing you that, first of all, in this first line, you're going to be doing 8 times 42. Okay? <clears throat> you don't have to write this. They're just showing you where they got this first remote. That's called partial product. So 8 times 2, 16 down the 6, carry the 1, and, and 8 times 4 is 32 plus 1 is 33. Okay? That's your first partial product. Then it shows you for the second one, it's actually showing you 30 times 42. Again, you don't have to write this here. If you need to at first, just to remind you and help you, that's fine. But think about what you're going to do. 30 times 42 is just going to be 3 times 42 with a 0 after it. So we just go ahead and put that 0 in first in the 1's place. And then we take 3 times 2 is 6. And 3 times 4 is 12, and you add those together, 6 plus 0 is 6, 3 plus 6 is 9, 3 plus 2 is 5, and nothing plus 1 is 1, so you get an answer of 1,596. Okay, you have a partial product, another partial product, and then your final product, where you add the two together. Okay. Most of the problems on this page and the next page are just the multiplication like this. All right? When you get down to uh, the, on 283, number 15 and 16, and, and 284, 17 and 18, there now is where they're doing estimating. Now, we haven't done any estimating for a while. Okay, I'm not going to do one of your problems for that, but I'll use the same example that was up at the top. Only I'm going to use it to do estimate. Remember, estimating your rounding. Okay, we have both of these numbers have two digits, so generally, remember with rounding or estimating, we just round to the highest place. So right here, the highest place is 10's place. So remember, this is the number we're going to round, and we look one place to the right to see what we do, how we round it. So here's our 4 and 10's place. We look one place to the right. That's less than 5, so that's less than halfway. So 42 is just going to round to 40. This is going to stay the same. That's going to change to a 0. So 42 rounded or estimated would be 40. Remember, if it's halfway or greater, you go up to the next number. If it's less than halfway, you keep the number the same and add the 0. Okay. So then this one, 38, again, we're rounding and there's 10. When we look one place to the right, that's 8. So that's more than halfway. That one's going to be closer to 40. Okay? So in this case, we have 40 times 40. And now we're back to what we were doing yesterday. 
multiply your non-zero digits. So I'm just going to take 4 times 4, which is 16. But I took away two zeros. So I'm adding those two zeros back. So my estimate would be 1,600. And notice what my actual answer was, 1,596. So if all I needed was a close number, my estimate would, just, would be fine. Or if I wanted to see if my real answer was reasonable, I could round it, and 1,600 is pretty close to 1,596. So that's a way, one of the ways that you can check or estimate your answer, okay? So all the rest of them are like that. So all of them are just multiplication like this or estimating like this, okay? So hope that helps. You guys be good. If you get a snow day tomorrow, enjoy your snow day, all right? And uh, make sure you keep those snowballs six feet apart, okay? All right, take care, guys. We'll see you later.